It is so good to see you. You look fantastic. And I feel like I just woke up. But you look like you've already crushed three hours today. <laughs> well, you know, it's about getting going in the morning, right? And <laughs> I love your three Ps. I just love your three Ps. That is some, those are my three Ps that get me going in the morning. Amazing, man. Uh, I did a brief intro that probably didn't do much justice to what you really are about, the essence of Abiti, uh, which I want to dissect today for the people, pun intended, because you know, you know where the pun is coming from. Uh, Absolutely. Tell the people about you and, and then give us, like, when the COVID is over, where's the first place you're going to get a ticket to go to? Disneyland. What? Yes, Disneyland. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I have every, all of us have a child within us and I've always been that child within. So, yes, Disneyland. But thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, hello to all our viewers watching us, wherever you're watching us from. Good morning, I guess, in the Western Hemisphere and wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, hats off to Satsby for bringing this on because this platform is so great. Yes, amazing start to the week with all the talks that have gone on so far. So I'm grateful that I'm able to share my journey today. So yes, I'm Abhiti. Now, Abhiti is the official name of Dr. Amita Josie Mundanchara. So I'm a physician by day and an artist by night. And that by night didn't happen overnight. The three Ps went into place, which I'll share in a bit. But right now I do a little bit of everything, uh, singer, uh, dancer, I'm a TV host, a radio host. Uh, I've begun to write my own songs, so I call myself a writer and I've also what? done- Yes. <laughs> Listen, uh, can we just take a quick pause, okay? Yes. Oh, don't get past like three things. Hey, I'm a this and a this and maybe a this, right? What up, Jay? Uh, Shai Miller, what's up? Gajan, what's up, buddy? Um, thanks for joining us. Navi, what's up? But you're like, like, like you know how people who are academically incredible and they're like, I'm a BS and then I'm a PhD and then I'm an MBA and then I'm a this and a this and a this. When I hear the things that you get involved in, I'm like, whoa. Does this girl ever sleep, right? Um, um, but, that's a question. <laughs> you know, uh, but a little bit about, like, let's just go back, okay? You're, you're studying to be a doctor. Yes. Uh, so let's, actually, let's go back. Let's go okay, back. I'll go way back, way yeah. back to my childhood. <laughs> so I, I want to deconstruct the path that took us to where we are today. Absolutely. So growing up in a, as I would say, a typical South Asian conservative family, uh, the focus was on academics. I had a lot of hobbies growing up, which including, uh, which included singing, uh, being in the school orchestra. I used to play the keyboard. Uh, I did a little bit of Bharatanatyam. So I used to have all the hobbies, but those were all hobbies. Right. Leave it at hobbies and focus on your academics. And that was fine because I love the sciences. So I started to focus on the academics and put aside all those hobbies. And went through medical school, started doing my full-time job. And then came a phase in my life where I went through a really low phase in my life, where I was just working, 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 making money. But there was nothing else. There was nothing mm -hmm. else to my life. And that's when I decided that mechanical life was not for me. Work home, work home, work home, 24-7 call. And I realized what was missing. I had actually, you know, subdued all my passions with and just because I was expected to be that uh, role model, the good doctor, the good daughter, you know, follow everybody else's expectations, but not really listen to myself. So I did go through a phase of depression, which was always on and off through life, but I hit a rock bottom. Mm. And I was... Daring that. Yes. Yeah, I hit rock bottom. I was emotionally feeding myself. I became obese. I felt depressed. I kept eating and it became like a vicious cycle. No, we don't talk about this kind of shit, man. We don't. And I, I appreciate the platforms like this that you're doing, uh, my dearest Satsvi, that, that helps us realize that we are not alone. Like everybody does go through it, but we don't talk about it. And that's the thing. And okay. hopefully the more we talk about it, we don't feel alone and we don't feel afraid to follow those passions. Because when I hit rock bottom, I decided, no, it's time to listen to the inner voice. It's okay. Listen to others around you, but don't yeah. take 
but don't take it you know to yourself uh, there was one major epiphany that happened when my mom had a major health issue and she got bedridden and the doctor in me kind of kicked in wait a minute amita you're going to go through the same route if you don't take care of your physical and mental health mm. and that's where the journey started and dance was the first thing i went to in terms of a stress buster right and when that happened and i started to love myself again through feeling good about myself mentally and physically a wow. whole new universe opened to me the negative me turned into a positive me and then there was no looking back and then it was me going through every hobby i had in childhood and go full on with it and wow. that's and it was didn't happen overnight wow. it was like a slow 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 process and uh but that's what exactly like you said patience and persistence and i never let the passion within me die and over years i've slowly kept adding a little bit to it from dancing i went on to tv hosting and singing came and so forth and i'm not going to stop because this is a whole new life where stop. i where does it stop the only <laughs> stop in your life is a stop sign when you're driving yo this is I, easy Yeah no it it is just amazing it's a whole new world where i feel much more in control 100%. like yeah like i had to cut down my physician hours so i can uh, focus on my passions but that's good i'm happy now that's the key uh, word i'm happy listen i i'm i literally am running out of space from taking notes because i've got so many questions to unpack guys if you're watching this do us a favor hit share there's at least one friend in your network that should hear this conversation okay uh cuz this is real raw talk this is my 9 a.m. boost not just for you guys but for me too like the last four days yo i get pumped by 10 o'clock i can't even i can't even tell you like like how pumped i get and this has been my own life hack to get me out of covid mindset which has been depressing and down and i'm a social butterfly that can't do anything you know navi i'm putting that on a shirt baby Only stop sign in life is the stop sign when you're driving. That's a shirt, twenty nine ninety nine, coming out tomorrow. If you guys want to buy one, comment below. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hustler mindset Me. coming on. Um, let's unpack something, okay? Because one of the things I'm talking about in my book is this idea of, 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 of like most of us, in, especially in the South Asian culture, and I'm sure it applies for most of the other cultures too. But we get a hand me down life. The minute mm-hmm. we're born, we get a hand me down life. Most of us. take it for what it is because we don't have the room to discover who we are and it's not just education it's you know how you're supposed to behave if you're first born or a female uh, how you're supposed to dress where you're supposed to go and not supposed to go where you're supposed to study and in in this structured hand me down life that we all start a lot of us don't have the ability to listen to ourselves pay attention to what makes us strong and then explore that how was your early days was being a doctor uh, uh, a dream that you had when you look back on it was it a hand me down that you sort of fulfilled but then it was in your walk me through because you're the only like doctor i know and 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 my parents didn't even think i had the chance to be a doctor i didn't even get that like assumption they're like this kid is dumb already we're not even going to ask him you know hopefully he'll be something in in like accounting or something but walk me through the early days of like this idea of a hand me life where did it fit in where it didn't fit in and when did you start listening to like your own thoughts thoughts so uh, actually i wouldn't say it's a hand me down i will be honest i was not really a good student when i first started i used to get Lies. c's Lies. and d's i used to get c's and d's lies uh, i need to okay i'm not, i'll have to go all the way back to cutter <laughs> cutter and ask my teachers to give me the report but that's the truth my mom is actually a housewife uh and uh when i first struggled through my early days of education she actually put in a lot of effort to help me through a process of how i can be disciplined with and organized and even that took time for me i was not uh, like just automatically smart i actually had to work hard to learn a process of education so Did you have any hacks back then because i had some hacks on like how to like because my brain doesn't remember uh like anything that is written uh, in a way I'm kind of like Trump I need to I, I just said it damn no oh oh take it back guys delete it uh, <laughs> in some ways how Trump absorbs content is sort of how I do it uh, I'm a visual thinker I'm a I'm a I'm a talker more than a writer which is why this damn book has been 2 years of the journey uh but 
any hacks that you came up with to help your brain like play nice with you so i i'm also a visual person and i also use uh the uh, analytics of relationship like so if i'm studying about something i try to relate it to real life and that kind of visually stays better with me mm. so and so i'm i am in terms of the skills for me memorization is the best so okay. i found like that's why probably i like the sciences a lot because there's a lot of theory which you can then apply and that's where i would do by association keep things in mind i was not as good at uh, physics and mathematics my dad was an engineer so for a while it was like okay oh, uh, do you want to be a, 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 a yeah okay cool no, it's fine it's like it's like what they handed out in the 70s you know hey you're a boy you can study here's an engineering degree go you know find so, a housewife like it was like the same formula <laughs> yeah it was the same formula so it, he wanted actually me to be a, a an engineer on an ias officer oh gosh uh, yeah ias i'm like i'm not going that route but then uh, when he when they realized okay i have some strength in the sciences yes they did push me to become a doctor but that was also partly me because i enjoyed the sciences but one thing if i had to go back what i would change is i would have tackled both uh, the education and the arts at the same time which is what didn't happen because for example even with the bharatanatyam i went up to a certain stage when it came to the arangetam part my dad was like no this is just your hobby yeah. you're not going to go perform in front of everybody else uh, even for uh, the being a keyboardist in school orchestra that's how far it would go if i wanted to go to an outside band or something no. that's it within school limits do whatever you have to but then beyond that it's a no so <laughs> so as a quick yes. okay cuz i know you for the last 5 5 6 years and the version of you that i know is a bt right the the person i met was a tv host and then a performer then i've seen you on stage at desi fest and the shows you do and the and the content that you create where you dance and you fuse music and the thing you said that was the most you know sort of interesting and completely counter to who you were at that age is like you get to have a passion but you can't get to share it with the world you can't perform and for me it's it, as you hear you you know things that i don't remember about my own life comes back but for the for the first i would say 12 years of my life my dad would constantly remind me to shut the fuck up he be like you talk too much every way we tell you 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 blah 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 and and from like age i would say 4 to at least 13 the first day of school the first day of school every single day he would like satish go to school don't make any friends don't become an ass don't talk don't open your mouth come home and i'm the complete opposite what do i do today i talk for a living what do you do today you perform Like, absolutely it's crazy that when we dissect the things that we were naturally good at that were muted that are now today what people know us for absolutely and that really happened when i guess even you me started listening to ourselves because when uh, when i was growing up i was muting myself i was li- listening to everybody else but muting myself but there's only so much our mind our body can take like you know there it's like a volcano waiting to explode and that eventually happened for me like and then i had to listen to myself and that was such a blessing one major blessing is coming to canada honestly for me uh, and you both i love yes you. i love canada for that i mean also as a female i mean there were other restrictions that came into place or expectations okay now you're a doctor get married have kids end of story and i i don't know if, how my life would have been if I, we were to settle back in india because i grew up in qatar so you cannot live in qatar forever so you kind of move back to some place whether it's india or where where else and i'm so happy it was canada because canada opened a whole new world for me just kind of uh interacting with everybody my uh my friends whether it be in school colleagues where at work i realized there's a whole new world out there where you can be yourself you wow. don't you don't have to be stuck within a box of expectations so let's and, talk because you know the insight that you got srijit what's up pearly man i can't wait for pearly's episode i have so many questions and melanie Thank you for saying that man. The whole point of these morning conversations is to get these these conversations that are not happening happening and and dissecting, you know, Abiti's wonderful career and life and 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 her being vulnerable enough to share her past gives us all permission to do the same. 
whether publicly or reflective over the course of the next 12 hours. I feel like we're morning hit cardio exercise, you know? We get that like like 30 minute workout in our brain and then it lasts for the next 48 hours. You bingo, know? bingo, bang so, on, yes. We need so, that, yeah. So, so let's talk about something uh, as we get into the next phase. So you're starting to hear yourself a little bit. You have some ideas around what makes you tick. Um, obviously going into the medical field, you really got to focus on your strengths. Mm -hmm. What are some of the early, early signs of weaknesses that you know uh, you started to not focus on because we're so good at focusing on our weaknesses to make it better. Where I now realize I spent too much of my time trying to be good at shit that just naturally I'm never going to be good at. And the minute I let go of that, whoo, rocket! But walk me through some of like your weaknesses. Number one is trying to hit perfection based on what somebody else tells you it's supposed to be <laughs> like. So that was a major roadblock for me when I first started because, say, whether it be dance or singing, uh, obviously, I didn't go to school to train early on. So I do need to put effort into it, go through classes, workshops, whatever it may be, you know, get my mentors. But early on, I used to get uh, so demotivated when I'm watching other dancers who have been doing this for you know, a few years and I'm not able to catch up to their level. So I'm like, that's perfection and I'm not able to hit it. So I should just give up. So yeah. that was one of the weaknesses I had always comparing myself to others and trying to say that is perfection. What I'm doing is nothing. Yeah, and that's so, a, a remnant, you know, breadcrumbs or whatever it is from this ideology of a handed life, you know, because we're constantly sure. told we're supposed to be and we try to go against it. It, it doesn't feel natural. Because a third of our life, we're kind of given a blueprint. Absolutely. So it, it, I absolutely agree. Because again, it's all within your mind in the end. Because what you grew up with, what is the picture that has been handed down to you that life should look like. And then you just keep focused on it, not realizing there's so much strength within you that you can focus on. And forget about all that expectations, being that perfect someone that is somebody else's picture of their perfect life everybody has their own journey and so we need to realize that so once I started realizing that that was a weakness I tried to actually turn that towards pursuing my passions nice habits so, that create passion and follow through so one of the things that I always am curious about when I meet folks like you that are doing these things uh weaknesses are like these little um What's the word I'm looking for? Like, I got a big, like, sugar candy addiction, right? Like, I have to force myself not to see it. Because the minute I see it, it becomes this, this thing where I have to do. Like, if there's a box of Oreos in the house and I see it, I have to finish it. Like, at 4 a.m., I'm out trying to eat it. My wife has to hide the shit. So I have to create new habits to, like, beat my own weaknesses, Right. Uh, so what are some of the, the habits that every single day that you have to sort of create to be in the best mind frame and the best state of attack? So I had to create a whole new me. First of all, I had to teach myself what do I define success to be? Oh. And, and success is different for everybody and there's no wrong or right. For me, success came down to being a balance between being happy and being able to afford the materialistic things. Mm. So, I've never heard anybody say that. You know how many people fake lie to me and be like, I'm not into material things. I'm like, nah, it's okay. Ah, uh, no, I am, I am. <laughs> if you but are into balance, it, that's a balance. That's cool, as long as that's not the only definition of success. You know, uh, I, I love the fact that you threw that out there, man. That's so awesome. I, I mean, it is, it is true. We need a roof, we need the clothing, we need the food. So. Uh, it's, uh, once I figured out that is what I'm uh, striving for, the balance between the two, that I focus on that every day. Second thing, uh, going back to my depression days and uh, hitting rock bottom, I know that for me, it's very important to stay physically and mentally healthy because that in itself, it's like you, you, we just talked about, you know, that boost for your mind. Yeah. I need to eat healthy. I need to exercise daily and that is a must for me. And that is a whole new me that came through. Most healthiest Indian food you can recommend? I would, okay, I'm a vegan, I'm a vegan Indian. 
<laughs> it doesn't even exist. You're like, wait, what are we? Wait, uh, no, they, there are be- we can make vegan options to the Indian food. But for me, it, I don't know whether you know South Indian dish called putta. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's steamed rice. It's boring as hell, but it's not- yeah, oh. yeah. You can mix it up. You can spice it up. You can put some curry in there, but I don't do that. <laughs> but the, actually, that is my favorite Indian food, putta. Nice man. Was was going vegan a conscious decision, or you always? No, I was a big meat eater and a big Coke drinker. Oh uh, wow. no, 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 not the Coke. I mean the Pepsi Coke. <laughs> Listen, I already said I'm kind of like like Trump, so it can't get any worse than that. <laughs> Susan, what's up? I can't wait for Susan's session too, man. She's just a boss. <laughs> so yeah, no, I used to be a big uh, meat eater and uh, you know Pepsi drinker, but I conscious decision first for uh, the physical and mental health, and secondly, I have dogs. So mm-hmm. and my, you know, once I got uh, my dogs, it was a little bit harder to eat meat. So no. that's where it came along. Uh, um, third thing I would say, practice is very important with all the different things that I do, as we call riyas for singing or for dancing. I, I make it a point to plan my day from when I wake up to when I go to bed. And I try to make sure no matter how hectic my schedule is, I put in time for practice because only practice will take you, you know, the, where you want to be. Distance, yeah, you got to Yeah, you have to. And prioritizing. I mean, life is not a straight journey to where your destination is. I've oh, learned well, that. Well, say it again, man. Well said. Oh, my gosh. Life is not a straight road to where your destination is. I mean, look at COVID-19. What has it taught us? Yeah. What, a lot of us, like, you know, with my artistic projects had to be put on hold. Even as a physician, things have changed so much. So, I mean... Have your eye on the money, wherever your destination is. But remember that you may not get it, get there like easy in a straight route. So things may happen. Life throws stuff at you. But don't get uh, your bucket list, you know, off. Remember yeah. all the things you want to do with your passions. And the, you might have to just reprioritize at times. But I keep checking that bucket list every day, you know. So these are some of the hacks I've learned over time to be able to tackle the passions that I really want to tackle in life. So uh, you're going down the path so nicely. Uh, we talked about the inner voice. We talked about the passion. So the, the habits allow you to stay focused. It's like, it's like our guiding rail, right? When we're sort of off, off path, we're like, hey, go. Uh, for me, uh, I find if I'm not obsessive enough, I can't do it. Like, this show couldn't have been once a week. If it wasn't daily, it's not going to happen. I will skip a Friday and then it's over. Just like if Sofa Sessions wasn't every single day, I can't do it, right? Um, And so when I look at like, you know, the habits that you have, you know, I love the fact that you sort of outlined the crazy wild path, but then routines like eating healthy and staying focused and, and, and sort of in that, in that guardrails sort of keeps you in that crazy wiggly line, which is awesome. Absolutely. Homie Shaimala was asking, because she's a dancer and she's trying to break through the scene. Uh, give her some wisdom, man, like from your journey. It's a fellow artist that is trying to figure out how to, how to break through. Hi, Shaimala. So nice to have you with us. Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, like I was mentioning, I left our birth in Artem when I was younger, but after I decided to go back into dance, it was about finding mentors. So you step out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to grab an opportunity. So I would look up workshops in the community, dance classes that would fit my style and need and time and go do it. Don't be afraid. I mean, when I first started in my first dance class, I was at the back of the class, very scared to do even my first move. But you keep going, keep going, and eventually you get to the front of the class, and then maybe one day the instructor notices you, and then you become part of the dance troupe. I mean, so it's going back to even Satish's piece, you know, it's about being patient, persistent, and keep that passion up. So I would definitely ask you to look into dance classes in the community. If you want, you know, message me, I can guide you to some of them and start there and take it from there. That's amazing, man. Um, let's talk about safety net. Okay. Uh, yes. A lot of us that, that have, you know, sort of 
these side hustles or transitioning into a passion um, talk about like, oh, my plan A is being a doctor. Plan B is like, uh, you know, I'm going to be a dancer or a singer, but it doesn't work out. You know, I still have plan A. Um, and I used to say that too, you know, I've got a computer science degree. I'm going to do a startup. And then if it all fails, I got a degree. But that actually hurt me for most of my life because the plan A never really allowed me to move into plan B. As you're, you know, sort of in this nice Venn diagram of like there's the artist and then there's the, the doctor and you're straddling between the two. Talk to me about safety net and a plan B. And is there even one? And, and anybody that's in that mode, you know, what do you say to them? So uh, honestly, that mentality of a safety net, just like you said, is harmful. Just as for anything that you do, I, I feel. Because then you kind of, get into that lazy mode and think, okay, maybe if I don't succeed in this, I have this fallback on. And then you don't put your hundred percent into plan B. So for me, it's about tackling everything that I'm passionate about hundred percent. And like you said, it's a marathon, not a race. Yeah. So it's for me, it's about being the physician, being the artist, but learning to know my boundaries in terms of how much effort and time I put into both, but not saying, okay, maybe if I'm not a doctor, I can be an artist, or maybe if I'm not an artist, I can be a doctor. For me, it's about being able to put 100% into whatever I want to tackle. That's so incredible. that's, so, and I find like only if you set that mindset, others are going to respect you. Yeah. Because if uh, there have been times where, you know, I'm uh, looking for a gig and then somebody finds out, okay, she's a doctor. Oh, she's doing this for a hobby. So it doesn't really matter to her. So if you don't believe that you are an artist, others won't believe. That's so, so I, well said. So I, it's about believing. It's like, yeah. uh, uh, you know, yesterday the cannabis queen mentioned too. Manifest, manifest that Manifest what you want to be, who you want to be, and the universe will reciprocate. Only when I started to put my 100% into being an artist rather, being a, rather than it being a hobby, opportunities started opening up. Exactly. I mean, even for, like, for example, being a TV host, I just showed up for an audition not knowing what it was for. I was just passionate about the fact that I, I get an opportunity to act. And I believe that I could be an actor. It was not because I had a day off, so it kind of worked out. Okay, I could go and do the audition, but I didn't go with that mindset. I said, I'm going to go and do this audition 100%, the best wow. I can. That's and it. I'll see what happens. And the universe was listening. The universe was listening. I really wanted to be that artist. And then, you know, I got, got the role. So. Wow. Un Unless you believe and put 100% into anything that you do, it won't happen. So safety net is good. It probably does work for some people. But I find like I then go into lazy mode if I think like that. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And it's funny because now I, I, can, I, can, I can predict my success rate. What I mean by that is I get like a thousand ideas a day. And then there's the, the 1% that I don't have a plan B for. And then the other 99 that I have a plan B for, I'm like, I'm not interested. Because the minute my brain is like, ah, let's give it a shot. If it doesn't, I'm like, well, then what's the point of doing it? You know, uh, I'm either going to go all in or not. And then there's also this like cultural misconception that we kind of have to pick one thing and just do it. You know, you want to be an engineer, you're an engineer and that's it. Like, that's your life. You want to be a doctor, you want to be an accountant, you want to be whatever. But that's not what people are. We're complex, amazing human beings that are constantly on the search for where we fit and how we can help the universe. Even if you don't think you think like that, I guarantee you that one day you're going to wake up and the question in your brain is going to be, where do I fit in and how can I help? And when that happens, the light bulb just turns on, you're in a whole different space. And I, and I wish everybody can experience that moment. How do you manifest? How do you visualize? Cause I've been, I tried meditation. It didn't really work for me. It's too, too, uh, too lonely to meditate for me so I don't do it um, my meditation is actually loud music man where I sit and like just geek out on remixes but I'm not focused on it but uh, for me 
to, to manifest anything, I need to emotionally believe in it, which means I got to see it. So then I go looking for pictures. I have a Pinterest board. I put like stuff together of the people I want to meet, the things I want to own, the places I want to live. How do you practice manifestation? You're very similar to what I do. So that's, uh, it, I'm also a visual person. So it's about uh, if I have a project or if uh, my goal to be that fusion artist, as I call the triple thread, the singer, actor, dancer, I constantly uh, visualize uh, projects done by my inspirational role models, read their stories and get inspired by them. That's one thing. That's amazing. Second, Second thing uh, for me is spirituality. I don't know. It, it's different for different people. Some call it the inner voice. Some call it religion. I call it spirituality. And uh, this may not resonate with you, like you said, but it's similar to meditation. It's not exactly meditation, but maybe talking to myself, you know, talking to myself, talking through what I, being grateful for what I have. Again, exactly. going back, I have the basic needs. I have my physical health. I have my mental health. So what is stopping me? So I do that pep talk for myself, which is connecting with my spirituality because I find that gives me signs from the universe. And I kind of connect very well with that. The more I'm connecting with my inner self, I'm finding signs within the universe that's guiding me the right way. And helping me on days where I have those low days. I mean, not every day is perfect. There are some days, you know, you wake up feeling like shit. Yeah. But, but again, going through those routines we talked about helped me. Spirituality helps me. Reading and following my inspirational role models who are on a similar track where I want to be, that helps me. That's amazing. Uh, let's take a quick life pause and we look at Melanie's question, which is incredible. What advice do you have for artists that are holding back because they have a family or children to care for? I, I'll tell you my two cents after, our, you know, Bitti, you, you share your thoughts first. Absolutely. I totally hear that. I mean, uh, with family, there are priorities to be set. So I would say, yes, it might be all about the timeline. But don't let go of your passions. So this is coming back to prioritization. So you know what your passions are, what you want to tackle in life. But maybe right now, you are prioritizing with the health of your family, being able to uh, give a better life to your children. But remember, once they are able to become independent, you are able to follow your passions. And that may even be now. Discuss it with your family. And hopefully, your husband or wife is supportive of the passions that you want to follow. And they will help you. I've had, I have many mentors in my life who are married with families, but still pursuing their passions because they have voiced what they want to do in their life to their partners, to their children. And surprise, surprise, their they family is supportive. Yeah. They're very supportive. So be honest with yourself first. Be honest with yourself, true to yourself, what you want to do in life, and then voice it. I mean, your partners are in life, your children are in life because they are your family. And they will be supportive. For the few, I know there are few, I mean, including myself, where family may not be supportive, but that is okay. That's where friends come in, your yeah. colleagues come in. Let go of the toxic relations. There are many toxic relations. It's okay. Everybody has their own story. Don't judge them for it. Just let go of those. But so, embrace the positiveness. So well said. And I'm going to add a tiny bit more to it from somebody who's got, you know, wife and two kids and, and a bunch of businesses. What I realized is the more pressure I put myself to be an external artist versus internal, it was easier for me to understand, like, I don't have any desire to go and get a nightclub gig or a DJing gig, even though I can call a bunch of friends and I can get a residency somewhere tomorrow. I don't want to, but what I want to do is just play music. And so I realized that, you know, time is a, is a weird formula, right? Like, just like money, there's always a lot of it. We just don't know where to find it. And so I started to say, okay, I need just 20 minutes a day to be my own artist. It's not to broadcast, it's not to go live, it's not to share, it's not to get a DJ. I have an artist side of me that needs an outlet. So 
instead of trying to figure out how to get 20 minutes, I found habits that I can get rid of. So instead of sitting in front of TV and having Netflix as I'm working, which, will, which I realized made everything take longer to work because I'm watching and working, I just work for 20 minutes. Now I got 20 minutes free. I don't watch Netflix. I go DJ, right? Um, I can't DJ during the day or afternoon because I'm spending time with the family. So I learned how to DJ in a quiet room with just headphones on when everybody's sleeping at 3 a.m. Nobody cares. I get 20 minutes. I go DJ. So you got to find the time to invest in yourself by removing things that are not enabling you to live that true moment. So I hope that answers, Melanie. Um, one last question for you. Let's talk about money because this is making money moves. Um, most of us are handed such a shitty emotional baggage when it comes to money. Um, talk to us about your relationship with money. How has that changed? And as you look at the future of Abiti and Amita and all the things you want to work on, how does the emotional relationship with money impact any of those things? So, yes, the relationship with money has changed a huge, huge deal for me over the years. So I have gone from the person who wanted to make money and have the life of luxury with everything possibly that I could afford to a place where I can be happy and have a sustainable source of income where my passions are done for me in a way that I'm happy about it because I could go, uh, you know, gigging, 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 make money, make money, but have no time to, uh, to grow as an artist mm. versus doing quality stuff that speaks to me and speaks to the rest of the world and make enough money that I'm able to afford a comfortable li living. Right. So that's where it has come down to. So uh, uh, whether it be the physician side where I've cut down hours, where my income has gone down to probably one third of what it used to be. Plus now my artistic gigs, which pay me a decent amount. That's... And and it's also important to be able to say no. That's one thing I've realized. And that's when proper money will come in through the artistic stuff. Initially, I was naive. Uh, you know, uh, it's, some, it's sad though, but uh, artists don't get their due sometimes with okay. a lot of the projects. But it's when you change your t uh, mindset and you realize you are worth it. You take yeah. up gigs with people who respect you as an artist and you will make that money in the right way. I love so that. that's that's where it has come down to be with the right people who respect you as an artist and don't take you for free and use you for anything they want to unless you put that mindset out there hey I'm an artist I deserve respect and I'm worth it you attract the right kind of people who will hire you in the proper way and compensate you the right way and so now I've feel honored so I'm working with the, the right uh, group of people where gigs projects come where I get compensated mm. appropriately for it's like a jigsaw puzzle right like when you fit when you fix it internally what you project externally is what you desire bingo uh, and and that's exactly what you've manifested uh, as a total circular revamp from becoming a doctor to understanding what burnout meant and taking care of your mental health and pursuing your passion and creating incredible micro habits every single day that keeps you focused and now being comfortable in the duality of being a doctor being an artist making money in both being comfortable with both getting rid of the goddamn plan b and then really enjoying and being happy with the decisions you're making is a fantastic fantastic opener to today uh, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, for all of you guys that are watching it live or people that are watching it recorded, uh, one of the ways we wanted to thank you for joining us at 9 a.m. Is to, is to gift you knowledge. And the way we're doing that is by asking our guests to pick one of their favorite books that we can give away to you. Fully transparent, part of it is to like increase visibility. So yes, there's a bit of a marketing play to it. Uh, but the other part is genuinely giving you guys something that you know, as a thank you. And so I asked Abiti to pick a book that is her favorite book that we could give away to somebody watching today. Um, Want to tell us a little bit about the book and what got you excited about it? Well, this is a book 
that if nirmala if you're watching you are the one who recommended it to me so nirmala. thank you va <laughs> how come she doesn't recommend any books to me what the hell <laughs> well she has been uh, with me through thick and thin so she really recommended this to me in the low phase of my life your badass life awesome so i would suggest everybody go tre- uh, read it because you will f- learn to love yourself reading uh, reading this Amazing. book so Amazing. We're going to put the link to the book from Amazon in the description if you want to buy it. We're also going to give a copy away, but all you got to do for me is comment below in the next 48 hours uh something that you took away from today's talk that resonated. No matter what it is, it could be as simple as Satish, I can't believe you said you're like Trump. That's cool. I'll think <laughs> but comment below and we will pick a a person uh and send you the book as a thank you. and if there's a friend you can tag and help us grow this morning conversation i would totally love it yesterday over 180 people watched the content which for me was mind blowing because like this little idea now has has starting to build momentum uh and then you know folks like you making an incredible morning for me and i get jacked and i can't wait to like go take over the world so thank you so much for joining me Thank you so much and I'm jacked up too because I just love every platform that you put out Satsbi Satish you know homi I mean we have uh, known each other for a long time but I'm so grateful for every platform that you provide you're one person I love to work with because you respect those who work with you so hats off to you and thank Yo, you there's a music video where we're going to be dancing it's going to come out why not we're going to figure Absolutely. it Absolutely you know but thank you have a great day Uh I will message you after to say what's up but thank you like being so transparent and vulnerable in all the things that we need to talk about uh needs to be said and I think uh that's what this is about so uh we'll we'll keep chatting I'll see you soon Thank you Thank you